Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't hear you. I'm not muted though. Hello. Hello. Now I can hear you. Yay. Click on the button. I now I can hear you. Okay, let's see. I have this external microphone. How are you, Denise? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm, uh, I'm trying to get this figured out here. How do I use this microphone? Allow, no, that's not it. Oh. Technology is good as long as you know what you're doing. Oh yeah, and then it always throws you for a loop when you don't expect it. Well, I have this external microphone that I like because it's it's pretty decent for sound. But then it it was working, and then now it's not working. And um, I don't know. Like your sound is okay right well, now oh, the way it is. This will be used. You can hear me well here. Yeah. Okay. Let me put this up. I just I did a uh, webinar Wednesday night on Google uh, Google Meets, I think it's called. Okay, yeah, Dan's um, been using that. And I I'm, I wasn't hosting, thankfully. Slides were kind of working and then not working, and uh, well, yeah. back to the. Other yeah, I've been doing uh, a few webinars. I've I've taught some practicals for CSNN, and sometimes the technology works, and sometimes it doesn't. And yeah, we it found is what that it is. the the um, the internet speed at the office is fine for emails, but so hopefully it's fine here. Our our because we don't need it to be fast. And they tried to upgrade me, and I'm like, I don't need it for anything really. Although maybe I do for this. Um, right. It wasn't. It was glitchy. It was fine for a bit, and then glitchy and kind of like pixely and that. So we, I, I actually did it at home in the end, the one on Wednesday. So we'll see yeah. if I'm doing. If we're doing more of these, I may upgrade speed a bit, but we'll see what happens. Um, yeah. okay, so and we, we noticed too because this is our house. Like, if and there's four of us home, if everybody's yeah. on the internet and like you know streaming videos and whatever, it's uh, or even like downloading a video game is the worst one we found out. So uh, I always have to say, okay, nobody can do that. I'm doing a webinar. 
Is this Dan or the boys? <laughs> uh, usually the boys, although they've been off since they've got back to school, they're off uh, video games. Like yeah. they're just not interested anymore, which is yeah. perfect. <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, so I am recording this. I think you're good with that. Yep. Um, yep. I, I, I assume you'll cut out that this all. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll get rid of this part. Uh, so I'll do, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just do a bit of an intro. So the one thing I would just give you a, a warning or a heads up on, uh, we have been getting hammered in saying things about the immune system, particularly the words boost and immune oh, system okay, in, the, sure. in the same sentence. Um, so I'm not saying yeah. don't say immune, but if you can say something like um, supports or uh, I don't know, I, that kind of wording versus, and I, I get the concept too, because you know, what, it has a max 100% capacity of whatever that maximum is. And the concept of boost is that you can do something to get past that 100%, which I mean, we would, you and I would agree on that. Right. You're not, not going to do something to go past that. But if you have a a lowered resistance yeah. or decreased function that you can do things to push you this way toward that hundred percent. But the word boost yeah. is the connotation right. that has been, we've been warned about is that it does something particularly chiropractic, of course, but, um, but in this conversation too, just that wording suggests something past that hundred percent. So just heads up on that. Right. It's the whole idea of giving 110%, which is impossible. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. a funny phrase okay. we use too. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So I'll do a, uh, I'll do a welcome here and then away we go. So do you, ha you have some practical things you're going to share? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I'll just go by whatever you want to know. We'll go yeah. from there. Uh, am I, are you expecting me to ask you specific things or do you have some specific things you're going to share about? Um, if you can ask, then uh, like I, I have a bunch of things I can talk about, but nothing specifically prepared. So if you okay. just want to ask, we'll, cool. We'll go that way. What, um, what is a good uh, starting point or, or like what's, what's a practical, like something useful that like kind of the average person would, who is not paying super attention to their nutrition? Uh, what's a starting point for them? Um, eating more whole foods, I guess. Okay. Well, maybe that's a good, maybe that's a good introductory question because. Sure. People aren't, okay. Okay, let me start uh, start our intro here. Hey everybody, we have our, uh, our friend with us, Denise, here today. She is a registered holistic nutritionist. We're excited to have her along with us. Uh, we are trying out the recording Zoom technology, so hopefully this is working. I guess we'll find out at the end. Um, but I'm gonna ask her a few questions. She's gonna share a bit. Uh, we're trying to give you some real practical things that you can do at home right now uh, to support your healing and your function and and sleeping and digestion and all those things that are really important all the time, but particularly now because of things being different, but also stress is being higher for, for some of us at the same time too. So uh, welcome to Why don't you actually share maybe just a couple minutes about your journey, who you are, your expertise? Sure. Okay. So uh, I am a whole registered holistic nutritionist. My uh, specialty is in whole foods, plant-based eating, but I support all kinds of uh, clients. Um, I, I do work with clients one-on-one, -on -one, but I also do a lot of talks and cooking classes, which is not so easy to do right now. <laughs> um, my journey, I went from being a very picky eater, um, eating a lot of meat, hating vegetables, being sick all the time, uh, slowly transitioned through to eating more whole foods, eating healthier, taking uh, proactive control of, over my health. And uh, I've seen a huge transition change um, going from when I used to just be constantly getting medications for infection after infection after infection um, like that's that's never an issue now if I get a cold I heal I get better you know uh, as I should so I also have so much more energy and I am able to function at a higher level than I was when I was constantly sick and so that combined with becoming a parent and really wanting my children to have a different uh, health story than me really uh, brought me to nutrition and, uh, and wanting to help others with their health. That's fantastic. Your own, just your experience moved you in that direction from what you, yes, what didn't work to what's better than what's a better choice and better, better uh, yeah, lifestyle choices to be making. Um, right. What do you do? Uh, you're teaching some right now. 
Yes, I am. So I, uh, I am one of the instructors at the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition in Mississauga campus. So um, I was teaching in person. Uh, now I am uh, doing online teaching still, but uh, yeah, it's been a whole lot of fun. How about like, can you do online class, like teaching or cooking classes or is that not possible even? Well, I've been doing online webinars, which are free webinars, and that's, that's been great. Um, I do have some cooking classes scheduled uh, for late May. Who knows if that's going to happen? Like, like in-person cooking classes? Like real life. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. So who knows if that's going to happen? If that doesn't happen, I'm sure uh, that we'll be looking at, at doing something online. Uh, it'll be a totally different experience because, of course, a big bonus for an in-person cooking class is that I get to show you the, the meals. You get to see what I'm doing. You can do that online, but you can't taste it. You can't smell it. You really can't experience yeah. it. So, of course, in-person is the best way, but the next best thing might be some online uh, cooking classes. So that, that's something that I might look at. Are those webinars, you have those recorded, are those available or are those part of a were are those on your website or how do you offer those? I'm doing them actually, I, the webinars that I've been doing lately are actually through Goodness Me. So um, people can sign up there. They're free webinars. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if they're recorded and sent afterwards to the participants. Um, I haven't actually, per, you know, been an attendee to a webinar yet. Yeah. Um, but they can sign but, up. Uh, I do certainly. Yeah, they can sign up on, online um, at goodnessme.ca. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so for the average person who is, you know, paying attention to, to nutrition, maybe not, or maybe they want to do some better uh, in that as a practical, maybe a few practical tips that would be helpful that we can apply right now or within the next few days, maybe to our next grocery trip. What can you uh, suggest for, for us? So we do have a different reality right now in that our ability to shop is very different than it was before. So, mm -hmm. um, and our choices at the grocery store are different. Um, our time spent at the grocery store, so looking for new items, it's not really, we are not encouraged to browse. So um, going looking for a whole bunch of new ingredients, this may not be the time, unless you have the ability to order online and do a curbside pickup option. Mm -hmm. um, but some things that right away would be useful um, is more fruits and vegetables. Now, if you're shopping once a week, as is recommended for us right now, you're going to be looking at getting um, vegetables and fruits that will have a bit more shelf life, mm -hmm. um, maybe can survive on the counter for a while. Um, and beyond that, once you use those up, because hopefully you're eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, um, maybe having a backup of some frozen vegetables and fruits can be really, really handy. If you have a little bit of freezer space, um, get things like frozen peas and carrots and corn and green beans, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, any of those things. They really survive well in the freezer. They're frozen at peak ripeness. Um, there's no additives. So that's something that you can have on hand and pull out uh, really easily when your fresh fruits and vegetables have run out. So I would say looking at incorporating more of those whole foods, more of those fruits and vegetables with you know the, all the vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients that they have it would be a really important first step. Awesome. awesome. Uh, yeah, it's uh, the, the grocery experience is a whole lot different. It's kind of get in and get out. And uh, I know we typically have made more trips for smaller, especially more produce. Um, right. On a more regular basis every few days and, you know, the bigger shops maybe once a week or something, but that's uh, it's a little trickier at this stage as well. Um, a lot of people, I know a few people who work uh, in industries where they're selling seeds and preparing for gardens and those kind of things, um, what, uh, which is very exciting. Eventually spring will arrive. I guess it's officially here, but uh, on paper. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't uh, feel like it always. <laughs> yeah. How about what are, like, I don't know what, if you have garden space at your place or not, but like, what are a few easy things that can be grown even without a whole lot of space or just in a planter, even that sort of thing? Sure. So. Uh, we do have space. Uh, we're very fortunate to have a nice size lot at this house, but our previous house, uh, the only place that we got any sunlight was on our deck. So we did a whole lot of container gardening then, and I got, I got pretty good at it and learning what you can grow in a small space and what grows well in a pot. Um, tomatoes are really easy to grow, and surprisingly, um, they do produce a lot. So you can grow them from seed, or when they're available if they are available and you can get seedlings that's great too 
Um, just be aware not to over plant tomatoes because you could end up with a really, really big harvest when, when the time comes and that happened yeah. to us. I got yeah, yeah, yeah. over enthusiastic yeah. as gardeners do, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but tomatoes, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> um, tomatoes are great, um, easy to grow. They take a long time though. So you may want to get different varieties, early girl or something like that. Take a look at at uh, how long it takes before they ripen. You can see that on a seed packet and maybe get different varieties. So you've got ones that will ripen sooner and ones that will ripen later. Um, that way you've spread out your harvest and you can enjoy them earlier. Um, cherry tomatoes are also a great one. Uh, cucumbers grow well in small spaces. Um, yeah, uh, peas are really easy to grow and they, like green peas, and they tend to, um, they tend to be ripe early. Also, uh, some greens can be good. I've had varying success with greens, but, uh, but they can be good. Kale, especially, I, I've had good success growing kale. Um, been, uh, also, we've, zucchini. I was going to say, Go we've, we've grown some, uh, some different varieties of, of greens and lettuce uh, in a planter box with, with some really good, good uh, yield from that, too. Yeah. It just depends on your growing conditions, right, and how much sunlight you're getting and uh, whether you're seeing on top of watering and not overwatering, you know, there's lots of factors. Yeah. yeah. Um, but having your own greens to pull from is just amazing. It's just so wonderful to go out there and pull off a few leaves of lettuce to have in your salad. It's fantastic. Yeah. With basil or yeah. tomato right out of the, uh, right out of the garden as well. Oh, yeah. I don't know if yeah, you saw and herbs. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I don't know if you saw, we just posted a, um, which might be a little bit trickier one. We posted a sweet potato waffle recipe. Uh, and video on the on your Facebook page. I, I, I just sent an email out as well, so you'll probably get that. But um, I was actually yeah, I haven't seen it yet, but I did see it. Sorry, I missed what you said there. Oh, I just said I haven't I haven't watched the video yet, but I did see the email come in, so okay. I'm looking forward to it. So there's yeah, I was actually just thinking about you making that because it's a gluten free. Uh, it's got oats and sweet potato, and then you know some other nice. uh, baking soda, baking powder, that kind of thing. Um, which I'm not a huge sweet potato fan just by themselves, but in something it's pretty mild, pretty mild taste that they're, they're good. They're really moist. So, um, yeah, we enjoy that one too. Um, how about someone who is th thinking of or, or decreasing meat in their diet in some way? Like what uh, we, we did that, uh, initially we were kind of just, we're going to take meat out and then whatever's left over is left over. What's the, what's the philosophy or what's the, um, I don't know, just the thought process of, if you're even just trying to decrease meat or animal products in your diet, can you speak to that a little bit? Sure. Um, so right now actually is a very interesting time. And I don't know if you've seen some of the posts out there about uh, the meat industry and about um, how that's been impacted by, you know, people needing to stay home and physical distancing and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it looks like selection at the grocery store is going to be impacted by that. So more and more people are going to have to turn to other options mm. um, when their their usual cuts of meat that they're they're expecting to be there aren't there, or mm. maybe the price is increasing. So it is certainly a skill for a lot of people to pick up. Aside from the fact that it's got a whole lot of health benefits, but I would say what's important what you mentioned there about um, taking the meat out of a meal and sort of eating what's left over. Um, it's important to swap out that meat for something else that's going to replace it nutritionally. Because if you look at, say, uh, a plate with um, meat and some vegetables and maybe some potatoes, maybe you've got bread, it depends on how you're eating. If you take the meat out, what's left isn't particularly satisfying, perhaps. It may not have as much flavor, and it's certainly not going to keep you feeling full for as long, and it's going to be a lot for your calories. So you need to take, if you're taking that meat out, instead of just a whole lot more vegetables, vegetables don't have a lot of calories. Mm. And um, swapping them out, or protein, they have some, but not certainly enough to keep you satisfied until your next meal. Mm -hmm. So swapping in something like, um, like beans, chickpeas, um, uh, lentils, tofu, tempeh, any of those things, or something made with those is a really nice way to sort of um, replace what you would have been getting from the meat, plus add fiber and vitamins and minerals and so on. Right. What are your thoughts on, I probably, I think I know the answer, but your thoughts on uh, things like tofurkey and like, 
vegetable based things that are tempted to be like even the, the you know the, the burgers that are supposed to be you know look and smell and taste like meat but are vegetable uh vegetable right um yeah faux meats or you yeah. know um fake meats i like faux it sounds fancier yeah uh my my take on those it it is that i think that they're a wonderful option I think that there are great transition foods for yeah. people that are looking at replacing some of their favorite foods and their comfort foods. It's a great option. There are certainly better choices in that medium than others. You yeah. know, some have more additives and are more processed than others. So um, that's a factor. But some have a really meat like flavor. And if you're having trouble giving up, the taste of meat, that can be really useful. Like yeah. the Beyond Meat burgers and sausages taste a whole lot like meat. Mm. So if you're trying to move away from eating so much meat, that's a really great swap out. But I would still look at it as a transition food, something that you'll rely on a little bit more initially as your palate adjusts, mm -hmm. but then hopefully it'll end up being an occasional food. Um, at some point, you'll be so comfortable with making meals that just have a lot of plants in them. Uh, you won't rely on them so much and your palate will have changed um, and you'll be used to new flavors. So you won't, you won't lean on it as much. Well, that's, that's the concern, right? It's the, the processing and the, my question always is not, not even necessarily what's in there, but what have they done to it to make it smell, look, yeah. taste like, like meat when it's not, not meat yeah. at all. Yeah. I see though, if it helps someone to, not feel like they're uh, missing it out and not yeah. feeling like eating plant-based is a sacrifice, then that's a good thing. It also can be really handy when we're actually able to socialize with each other physically again, yeah. going to barbecues, for example. You know, you can bring a Beyond Meat burger to a barbecue, somebody can throw it on the barbecue for you. Now you're eating just like everybody else, right? Um, that's, it's a whole lot life, nicer than just showing up with your bean salad, you know, like maybe, maybe you feel you're looking at everybody else having a burger and kind of wishing that you had a burger too. Yep. This allows you to do that in a really easy way. So, um, so that's a really nice thing about those products. Your, your word was transition. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, how, how about, I mean, we're not, hopefully we're not too far away from barbecue season here. We've had a little bit of up and down with temperatures. What time do you barbecue some some veggies? What do you guys do for for that? Yeah, so uh, one of our favorite things to barbecue, and we actually have a, a we we cook in a fire pit, which, um, but uh, we like to do like kebabs, veggie skewers. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I'll say that that's my husband's expertise, and he makes amazing, amazing um, kebabs. So usually we'll use an extra firm tofu that's been marinated for several hours and then um, marinated veggies like um, zucchini, uh, potato, um, sometimes, oh, definitely onion. Onion is so key. It tastes so good on the barbecue. Yes. <laughs> Maybe cherry tomatoes. Yeah. And then we will, uh, you know, put them on a skewer and barbecue them. That's absolutely our number one favorite uh, barbecue meal. I wonder if you would, would you share the marinade with us? Maybe we can attach the recipe to the, to the video. Absolutely. I'll ask my husband. He's not good at, um, he's not good at measuring, but I keep oh, saying no, I need that recipe. I do have one, but I'll run it by him. Exactly. Sure. Right. You taste it. Yeah, that sounds good. But okay. I do have one. I'll run it by him to make sure that it hasn't changed since then. And yeah, I'll send it to you. Okay. Uh, I'd love to, I'd love to share that with other people who want to see it, but I'd like to try it too. We we do uh, something similar sometimes on skewers, but sometimes just uh, zucchini or peppers. Mushrooms are very popular, mostly with my wife and I. Kids a little bit. Oh yes, mushrooms. Excuse me. Yeah, especially marinated mushrooms. Like that's yeah, that's fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Um, what other um, like simple um, meal ideas or maybe you know transitions as the word you used a few minutes ago? Um, if someone is considering, again, minimizing or even uh, going to, to no meat in their diet? So there are a lot of meals that people may already make that, that don't have um, meat in them or maybe eggs or dairy, uh -huh. or it's something that's really easily swapped. You know, perhaps, um, you know, it's easy enough if, if something, say, had ground meat in it, like ground beef. Yeah. It's pretty easy to get a veggie crumble, or you can even 
um, use cooked lentils in place of that. Is that what? Uh, so sometimes certain try to meet TVP. Yeah. What is what is that? That's textured vegetable protein, right? But what what is it actually composed of? I'm not sure of the chemistry behind it. And yes, it is a little bit. It's it okay. is a vegetable protein. Sometimes it's soy, but sometimes it's other. And I don't know what vegetable it's, they're using. Maybe pea protein. I'm not quite sure. Pro, quite processed. But it is a bit processed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the upside is it is. Um, it doesn't have additives really in it. Like it's, it's not full of additives. Um, and it is very pantry stable. Like it will last forever and it's very uh, easy to use. You just hydrate it and it's ready to go. It doesn't taste like much on its own, but if you hydrate it in say a vegetable broth, it's really good for throwing into say a chili, for example, or um, a pasta sauce, or even in say a taco meat, you know, taco filling. Yes. Really good for that to give you that texture. It's got that ground beef kind so of thing. It's handy to have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's high in protein. So um, we use it occasionally at our house. Um, just just to add a little bit of extra texture where one of us might like to have that chew. Uh, right. It is nice for that. And it's just so easy to keep in the pantry because it lasts forever. Right. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I interrupted you there on some of the um, like kind of the, the, sure. the meat free or, or uh, veggie um, meals that somebody may be already making. Sure. Uh, yeah, so they may find that they already are making meals that could easily, with a few tweaks, become meat-free. So they might just, like, they can even look up if they have a favorite recipe, they can look that up, like, put the name of the recipe, just Google it, and then vegan or meat-free or something, and they might see a nice, easy swap if it wasn't something they could think of easily on their own. Yeah. Uh, chili, I gave that example, that's a really, really easy one. The, the main uh, point of chili should be the beans. So just take out, if you're putting ground beef in there, take the ground beef out. And then you may need to though, um, adjust the flavoring because that's something that a lot of people find is a bit difficult when they're making new plant-based meals that they're, they, they take out the meat and the flavor isn't quite right. Yeah. So that's where a little bit of learning about how to season in a way to give you that savoriness that meat naturally brings. You can sure. definitely do that in plant-based meals. You just need a little bit of know-how. There's yeah. lots of information available on the internet about that. Um, like plant-based meals, umami, U-M-A-M-I. Um, if you search for that, you'll get lots of really good tips. Um, other things, soups are a really, really easy thing yeah. to make plant-based because, um, and it's a great way to use up really sad looking vegetables that maybe you don't really want to eat anymore, but they're not bad. They're yeah. just soft. They go great in the soup yeah. Yeah, rather than weighing them and throwing them out and throwing in, you know, a can of beans, a can of lentils. Um, it's a great way to make a hearty soup. You get lots of, of nutrients from your vegetables and it's, it's pretty easy to make. And the nice thing with a soup is it's very forgiving. You can adjust as you go, you know, season and taste and until you get it just right. So oh. that's a really nice thing about soup. What are your thoughts on um, this? There's cheese I've seen. Is it it's bean based? I think. A bean based cheese. Um, Have you seen that one? I not? mean, I know there's lots of cashew based. No, I've seen cashew cheeses, yeah. which are amazing. There's so many wonderful ones. They tend to be more of a soft cheese. They're they're the wonderful. Pardon me. What about the processing? Is there a lot in those ones or not? Not too bad. Like chemical processing, I mean. In cashew cheese? Yeah. Right. In cashew cheeses, no, they tended to have pretty clean ingredients and very little processing. So that's okay. that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. And there's a lot of Ontario uh, faux margeries, they call themselves, like F-A-U-X, faux, yeah. um, that, uh, that makes them incredible, incredible cashew cheeses and okay. really, really clean ingredients. Um, other types of, of non-dairy cheeses, it's hit and miss. It's getting better though. Certainly there are some with a lot of processed ingredients in them. Um, and there are some that where the taste isn't quite right or the texture's not quite right. Uh, so I always warn people that if they're trying non-dairy cheeses to be patient and try different ones. Also, perhaps to uh, get recommendations from people they know that about a good non-dairy cheese because um, some are good and some not so much. Yeah, yeah. Um, we are uh, we're here in Hamilton and uh, a few places. I, I'll ask you that question. In, in versus mainstream grocery stores, 
uh, what are a few good places to find some of the things you've talked about are different than, again, what the mainstream store would have? Sure. Actually, really close to you guys, uh, right across the street, uh, Taj Mahal Spices mm -hmm. and Cheese is an amazing place mm -hmm. for uh, all kinds of non-dairy cheeses. And the owners are, uh, are super resources in helping you to choose something um, that tastes really good. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot of plant-based offerings, some, um, some meals like that are frozen and ready to go. Uh, they often have like vegetable pies, which are fantastic. Uh, lots of gluten-free choices too. But yeah, that's one of my favorite places. Mm -hmm. um, probably my favorite place for getting uh, plant-based cheeses. They're really good. But also in the Hamilton area, um, yeah, there are smaller stores like uh, Mustard Seed Co-op is another place that uh, often has choices or goodness me. Yep. Um, and all of those have curbside pickup. So that's really handy. Yep. And I was thinking too, I guess you're, you're speaking more to Ooh. the generally... Can I add one more? Sure. Sorry. Yes. One more. Um, Coven uh, Vegan Market. Um, that's fantastic. That's in Hamilton too. And I have to say that they are, they've got so many great, great foods and it's always changing and really, really good for giving you advice on, on what might be good. So I, I didn't want to forget that one. Yeah. How, how do you spell it and where is it? Uh, Coven, C-O-V-E-N. Yeah. And it's on the street. Um, I can give you the details, but sure. yeah, it's great. And they have, they have curbside pickup. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Um, where can someone get in touch with you too? I see uh, something behind your right shoulder there. Uh, maybe you want to. Here? That one. You want to touch it? This one. <laughs> this one actually, it says it's probably reverse for you, but. Uh, uh, I can read it. It's, it's right for it's, me. Uh, I had a... Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was a sign that I actually, I had my son uh, put the letters on uh, probably a couple of weeks before the coronavirus was it, you know, was everywhere and we were told to stay home. And so it's funny. Yeah. Um, it was just, it was the right timing. Um, yes. And there's, uh, that's my ebook there behind me. Uh -huh. I was just going to read uh, the, people are, the quote there. Sorry, we're, we're talking. Right. About yeah, go ahead. Every, every time you eat or drink, you are either feeding disease or fighting it. Is that what it says? Yeah. Fighting it. Thank you. Yep. Uh, and then, yeah, but your, uh, your book too. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yes, and so my ebook, um, right? I uh, I am revising it right now to make it even better. So that's going to be available on my website soon. But um, certainly on my website, people uh, people can find me there, and there's contact info. So that's denisemassyrhn.ca. Okay, we can put that uh, that link in also. Um, anything else you want to mention that I didn't ask about, or that would be helpful for um, someone again thinking of of making some dietary changes? And again, that are, are uh, practical or doable, particularly right now with some of the limitations happening. Um, so I am doing a webinar tonight that may not be, you know, by the time people see this, it may be already gone, but I am doing a, a webinar tonight. And then again in May on uh, plant-based pantry meals. So I will mm -hmm. be talking about a bunch of different um, easy meals that you can throw together from things that you might have. Um, and easy staples and the cans of beans that a lot of people have stocked up on, but they don't know what to do with them anymore. <laughs> um, so I'll be talking about that beyond just like a can of beans and white rice. Like what else can you do? Right. Sure. Um, I'll also be talking about the basic formula for a good balanced plant-based meal so that um, it's easy to look at what you have and put something together yourself and know that it's going to be relatively balanced. Good. So I will be talking about that. But I, I think what's really crucial, as the quote kind of alludes to, um, although there's no specific foods we can eat that are going to give us any particular advantage, we certainly uh, be doing ourselves a disservice by eating a lot of packaged and processed foods with a lot of additives. And, um, and that's not very supportive for our health. Whereas focusing on cleaner ingredients, whole foods, can do so much to provide us both the nutrients that our body needs to be mm -hmm. healthy, but also to avoid overstressing it, which makes it really difficult for us to, to be as healthy as we'd like. Well, and that's two things there. That's the quote right over your shoulder. And the, the real measurement of health is not, you know, do, do you have stresses that happen, physical, chemical, mental, emotional stresses? Those all happen to us at different points in our lives. It's how well do you recover when the stress happens? Because it will. 
and particularly now, I mean, for all of us, I, I, I should say all of us, almost everyone is doing something different physically than they were doing a month ago or two months ago. Uh, and for some people, it's sitting a lot more or sleeping longer, which there are definitely some benefits there, but sometimes those positions aren't so good long term. But just different things are happening. It's and the resources that you've put into your health bank, even now or in March and February and January, are going to pay the dividends now. In how resilient you are to any stress that happens, whatever wherever that comes from. Yep, absolutely. And as I talk to you, I am at my standing desk. So good, and I am sitting. <laughs> so I'm glad you're standing. To help to compensate. <laughs> I'm not doing so well there. Um, well, thanks for your time today, Denise. I really appreciate that. Uh, I will make sure that we put that webinar link onto our Facebook um, today. So if there's anyone that would like to see that, again, this may not be out okay. before that happens, but uh, I can I can post some info about that uh, to see if anyone wants to join. And that's a, a Goodness Me webinar. Yes, it is. And I'm offering it again in May. We just don't have the date set. But I mean, if people uh, you know, or if they go to my Facebook page, as soon as that day is, uh, is set, then it'll go up on there. For sure. And that'll be a, a similar, or is that like kind of part two or is that similar to what's happening now? Um, the one in May will be the same. I'm also doing one on Monday about transitioning into a healthy plant-based lifestyle. Okay. So that could also be really helpful, um, for people and that that's on Monday. Through yep. I'll look for those and get those on our Facebook page too. Thanks. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think that wraps us up for now. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks, Denise. I'd like to do this again sometime, so hopefully that uh, absolutely we can do that. You bet. Awesome. Um, good. Yeah, I, that's. Uh, I think we're good. I, anything else that you wanted to? I mean, off off the uh, <laughs> off the video now. Anything else that I can add? <laughs> no, I think. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think that's good. Okay. I'll make sure to get that marinade or that the. The kebab recipe from Dan, I'll give that to you for sure. Okay, so I'm gonna do, I probably won't get this on now, but I'll get that info at least out. Um, and your, so the ebook is, you you will you just send that to for free or you're charging for that? Um, right now the ebook is, I am redoing it. So I am giving it to people actually, uh, I, I do give it to my clients right now. I am gonna, I'm just revising it because there's a bunch of recipes that I wanna tweak and, and, okay. and change. Um, but I do on my website, I have a, a link to, um, a free bootable guide with some recipes in there. So that's actually the perfect template for putting together any kind of a plant-based meal. It doesn't have to look like a bowl, but it's yeah. like that, it's that perfect meal template. So that is available for free on my website. Okay. So I will, maybe I'll highlight that in the in Facebook post we do then they can get that for free. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay, awesome. Thanks. thanks for your time, Denise. And we'll, uh, yeah, thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye.